Hello, and thank you for joining in the podcast, Being the Genuine Athlete. Today, I have a very special guest, Izo Zunic. He's from Croatia, a professional tennis coach on WTA Tour, that's Women's Tennis Association, and a coach in China Club. Um, He's traveling all around the world, but I invited him to be my guest because of his passion for personal development. He isn't just a coach for tennis technique and tennis tactic and physical condition and such stuff and mental health and such stuff, but for developing a person who is fulfilled, happy, content, well-adjusted, adapted to live and to withstand all the adversity and everything. So I'm so thrilled and excited to have this talk with him. I ask him that he sheds light on his breakthrough moments, situations in his life that created him, that enabled him to see the bigger picture, that elevated his consciousness awareness. So I'm excited and let's dive in. Thank you very much for joining us. My dear friend, Izo, Izodin, how should I, I call really you, Izo or Izodin? Iza, Iza. Iza, okay. Iza, yeah. Iza, it's easier. So, much easier, much easier, okay. everybody says. So you're a, a very good tennis coach, professional. Your career has been long, also a player, right? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. It's, uh, it's an honor and I, I really, I'm looking Looking forward to spend some time and speak with you about different subjects. So thank you for having me. It's uh, it's really nice. And uh, for tennis, I was actually just um, I would say average junior, average junior player. And uh, how I got more into tennis is because I left the U.S. to go to college, and that's how I use my just average career like anybody else. It was nothing special. I was not high in my uh, high in my country or anything, but I was good enough to go to college. And that's something, it was more actually for me to go to college, it was more school-wise, you know, because school-wise I really didn't care. I was just going to school and, and stuff like that. Like a normal normal kid, you know, just playing around, goofing around, using the school for this and that and playing tennis. And then I realized I met some people and it actually, I would say, on that moment accidentally but now when I look at my life it's you see you meet people and you just need to recognize what they're saying and stuff like that and then it's up to you are you going to take an up on it and I met uh, one person uh, that knew about I was actually giving them a tennis lesson and she told me like oh wow why you don't go to US and uh, you can go study there and you can uh, play tennis and that will pay your college and stuff like that and that's you know she gave me that idea and since that moment I started thinking like wow I can I can really do something with my tennis because I was not looking to go into pro I was not that level and I was soon going to be not playing tennis anymore when I was 17 18 I don't know it just I didn't see myself ever as a tennis professional tennis player but once Mm -hmm. she told me about going to college I was like all lights out you know lights you know, in my eyes. And I was like, wow, that would be so cool. And I, I went online, checked it out. And that's where I got desired to, to go there, you know, and actually, I wanted to, honestly, I want to see something else. I want to do something more and uh, to see the world. I don't know, that was kind of inside of me. And that's how I started researching about a college. That's how I started researching what I need to do, what kind of test I need to pass, recording myself on the video, sending it to the people. Uh, it was it was a you know one man show, everything trying to do by myself. I hired a guy who is uh, recording uh, the weddings because today it's very easy. You know, you get a cell phone, bam, you record yourself. You know the schools. Uh, everybody can reach you. You have apps and stuff. But at that time, it was when, it when was, was not. That? Uh, that was uh, so. I finished. Nine, that was two thousand one. Uh-huh. Two thousand one. I went to school two thousand one because after I finished uh, high, school, high school, I worked yeah. with my dad. I worked for a couple of months at his work. What he does every day, and that's where I realized, like, okay, I need because I love what my dad do, but I see how hard he he was working I realized okay you know do I want to do this for next 34 it's nothing bad but I just it was it was a wake-up call to me like okay maybe you want to go and do some 
you know, you, you want to get a degree and, and see what are the opportunities out there. So actually, I really appreciate those couple of months working with my dad after the, after the high school. It really, it really kind of pushed me to, to look forward for some things. Yeah. So, so and were, at that time, sorry? You are from Croatia. And yes, uh, Croatia. when did you begin to play? In what year? I, very, very late. Uh, very late. I started with 10. And I started because my friends were going to tennis. Tennis at that time, uh, so it was 91. Tennis was big because of Goran. So there was a lot of tennis yeah. schools open, stuff Goran like Ivanishevich, that. Goran Ivanishevich, right. Goran Ivanishevich, yeah. My You're from childhood. the same town than he is? Yeah, uh, I'm from Kastela. He's from Split. And, uh, but that's he's, close. Uh, yeah, it's close. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's 10 minutes drive with the car, yeah? And it's a suburb of, of Split. So yeah. it was our childhood hero, still my, you know, idol and everything. Uh -huh. And uh, that's why we started playing tennis. But I was very skinny, tall, 10 years. Usually now kids go at six, seven, five to go play tennis. I just went because my friends went there, you know, and I started liking it. I always liked to being in the, before tennis was always in the groups, you know, there was no so much individual lessons. It was more groups, groups. And that's why I think there was, was much more popular because, uh, you would go with your friends, you would enjoy tournaments, traveling, sitting in the van, going, S similar thing that you went through probably when you were playing table tennis. Yes, yeah? yes, table tennis is and, much more like a group, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So that's, that's, how I, that's how I started. I was 10 years old and I was just always playing, not, never doing anything great, but I was just enjoying, I enjoyed the process, I enjoyed the, you know, together. Uh, I enjoyed the things after the practice. We would stay play football. We would go, we would do different games, different things, you know, sometimes stupid things, you know, sometimes things that put us in danger, but that was the whole package of it. That was the, you know, that was the whole point. Going to practice, being at practice, after practice, all together. There was no mom and dad driving us with the car. It was all sit in the bus, walk to the club, yeah. do all these things. So it, it required a lot of effort before you come to the tennis court. It required a lot of effort after tennis court. You need to go to school and stuff like that. So and that was, was really, in the 90s. That and was the, in the 90s. And the war that, was going on as well. War was going on. Everything was going on. But we were just, you know, we were, we were still managing. You know, it was not easy financially. So that's why I'm very grateful for my mom and dad. Um, Can you compare? So, how was it financially, uh, like, exhausting or, in a way, demanding back then? Because tennis, as you said, it wasn't so much individual, but it yeah. was good, but it still needed some it was very, it, it was very demanding. It was very demanding. If you're not coming from middle or uh, higher upper class family, there was no way you can play tennis. You know, there was no way. And uh, somehow, and I'm not, I'm coming, I would say middle class family. And my, my mom and dad really worked every day and they didn't, they didn't go to the vacations. They didn't go to other things. They actually were just investing in me and later on in my brother, whatever we want to do. Nothing extraordinary, you know, we didn't get any other gifts, but I think right now the biggest gift for us was uh, playing tennis. Mm -hmm. And right now how I see it, it was, uh, it's not about tennis, it's about being in a healthy social environment that actually shapes you with all these kind of different things, pressures, mm -hmm. hard work, disappointments, and all these kind of things. And that's how I see tennis now. You know, I see it as a very, very healthy tool for developing a human, human values and human skills. Yeah. So at that platform. time, it was just, sorry? A platform for um, activating yes. yourself. Yes, potential. Yes, thing. platform. A very, uh, I would say, tennis is a very safe uh, life learning platform. So you will face adversity. You will, you will face social anxiety. You will face disappointments. You will face victories. You will face glory. You will face all these breaking levels. Yeah, uh, putting yourself in a community and uh, uh, showing yourself that you are worthy of certain position, mm -hmm. challenging, being challenged, all these kind of things. And uh, for me, the safe uh, tennis is a it's a great place, but not tennis. Every sport, every sport. I see sport in general, as the best place to develop human being. Because mm -hmm. it's just, it just, for me, it tests you on so many different levels. Mm -hmm. You know, tests you how do you respond to the mentor? How do you learn from your mistakes? All these kind of things. And I think sport is one of the best things that parents can invest 
in a, in a child or any other activity that requires a discipline investment. You know? there, there's a research uh, that they've done. The most successful people in life uh, anyway have either have a bag, had a background in army, martial mm -hmm. arts, those mm -hmm. are more specific ones. Of course. Of or course. sport. Or yes. sport, which gives you really the background for discipline and, and everything that you mentioned, coming over adversity and yes. life situations. Those yes. are the stories that we, that we have. And by my experiences, I had clients in coaching and, and doing, uh, you know, breakthroughs in life. The ones that, were not, that had no background from sport or any other kind like martial arts or army had difficulties. They, they, yeah. they couldn't cope with the adversity, with being under pressure. In yes. sport, every day, training, every week, you have games or at end of the week as a, yeah. as a child, I remember, and you as well, at the weekend, you have these games. It's so much pressure already as a teenager. It is. And, and without, we didn't have psychology knowledge back then or something. No, we no, just no. Go for it and play. They, they said, you know, be tough, you know, yeah, be, be tough, tough or, yeah. or, or be focused. Or, and those are very... Uh, easy words to throw around yeah. but the issue the problem is not that with words it's problem is like did you offer a solution mm -hmm. and does the person understand what you're talking about and what kind of tools they need to use yeah. to acquire things that you're asking from them so it's that's something that later on in my career I started uh, understanding and seeing that it actually was missing when I was developing as an athlete you know mm -hmm. another level another dimension to understand myself better and to understand what I'm doing better. So just pros there. Ah, you there you are. And uh, that was it. So then uh, to go back to the story, I went uh, to US. I passed somehow the tests, uh, the school-wise. That's what I was going to say, school-wise. I, I didn't go to great high school and stuff like that. But somehow I scraped it. I gave the bare minimum of, of requirements in SAT, in, in TOEFL, and I got a chance to go play. And then my first semester, I, I didn't handle myself very well. Uh, you know, school-wise, I failed some classes. And tennis-wise, I, I, didn't, I didn't came to be a, a top six in, in the school because, I, you know, to tell you honestly, I think I oversold myself there and uh, then I realized okay this is the reality what do you do now you know do you go back home or do you and I found a small a smaller college and actually it was the best thing that could happen to me I found a great mentor you know that was my what I call him my second dad mm -hmm. it's Jerry Hampton where I found him as a coach at Graceland University and it was small NAI school and I found myself there you know you you don't the lesson I learned is, is, is don't, you know, you need to find your place and don't be ashamed and don't be bad if, if that's not what you, yeah. you, it's supposed to be in the standards of others. Find your place. Away, if, put take away the non-essential drama and just focus yeah, on, on what's just, the you know, and that's NAI school, small NAI school in Iowa. Uh, it's, it's, it's a beautiful community of small school of 2,000 people, small town, very, very small town. I mean, everybody know everybody. But now when I realize it's the best thing that could happen to me because actually I came in the community, they, they accept me, accepted me and they, they, you know, I could use my skills and develop better because in other bigger schools I could not because I was, I was not tennis level to play on that on that level i was not ready at that time and maybe i was never ready so i found my school and that's where the great story of college uh, started for me you know that was that was really something you know i found great friendships the mentor as i said from jerry hampton who who dragged me how he said kicking and screaming from the beginning because i was skipping classes I didn't want to do this. He found me a job at a school so I can pay because I didn't get a full scholarship. So I need to find a job while I'm going to college. So he found me to do the painting job in the, during the summer. I would wow. skip that. I would not go. And he would wake me up in the morning because I was staying at his house. And I will never, never forget that. He, that that's where I realized the first time, uh, you know, how somebody is passionate about not one person because we had eight people in the team. He was passionate about everybody. And I really, I really admire that. He didn't divide better or good or worse. For him, everybody was super important. So it was, that was what kind of wanted me to be there. You know, that's where I fell in love in that 
in yeah. that team because of his leadership. And slowly, still in the classes, I was passing by this and that. And, um, you know, one time, you know, I, I got caught cheating. You know, I got caught mm-hmm. cheating in the way where I was actually helping others. You know, I would get the work from another. It was on a computer class or something like that. I would get from another and then I would pass it to others. I would help people, you know, I would, I would connect. I was doing many things. That's how back home I used to, you, you trade information, favors. Uh, this guy who's very good at computers, I would give them this. This guy who's not cool will go to the bar. Everybody joins together. It's, it's, um, I like, you know, at that moment I was mm-hmm. thinking, you know, uh, that's how I need to be to have fun. It was inside of me. And then professor took me to the mirror and he was, you know, and he was, he was not mad, you know, he was just like, okay, look at yourself in the mirror. And, um, he said, you know, this is, this is what you, when you look at yourself, you need to be proud of what are you looking for? And that was okay. You know, I heard that and it was something, you know, it touched me and, and I really respected how he approached me on that. But then I got sent to the Dean office and, um, Dean office is, I already been there many times. And he says, oh, my God, Izzo again. And he was very mad. He was very, you know, I cannot kick you. Your coach loves you. He's really pushing for you, stuff like that. You know, it's not he's going to kick me. But they were upset at me because I've had a couple of times for certain things. And um, he said one thing that actually changed me. And it was, um, he said, if I leave a dollar here on this table and I turn around, I know you're going to take it. And that really hurted me because that's not the person I am. But my action made him think I'm like that. Mm-hmm. Because in my world, it was like I'm helping everybody. Everybody is, everybody is benefit. It's a win-win. I'm not doing anything bad. I'm just looking for an easier way, you know. But, and I know I, I was not doing that kind of stealing. But the way I got reflected in other people's eyes really really hurt me that he would think something like that because that's what I would never in my life do. I would never steal from somebody anything. And that kind of, that kind of changed me of the way of thinking out of, you know, how my, how my stuff perceives me. And that, that's where I decided, okay, that was a junior year. And I decided I will never, I'll, I'll do my work. I'll do the diligence. You know, I will do everything that is required and every sign that I do, whatever I get doesn't matter, you know? And that's, let's say, I would say that's the one thing that, uh, you know, I always remember from college. You know, I, I remember, you know, I don't remember all the things that I learned, but I remember that lesson for me. Yeah, that's was, the uh, impact. Impact. That yeah. was very important. And I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm grateful for that dean that he told me much as it hurted me. I left very pissed off from the office. I'm very pissed yeah. off because I would never steal in my life from person a dollar or whatever, but it really hurted me. And then I, later on, I asked myself, you know, why would he think stuff like that? And that's where, you know, I started doing good in classes and doing my work. And it was actually later on, it, it paid off in a big. But that was interesting, interesting, interesting lesson, let's say, from that. And then I finished college one year early. And not, not finished college, my tennis scholarship went out. And to finish my last year of college, I got to be uh, assistant coach mm-hmm. for the team. Uh, for women and men in NA. And that's where I first discovered uh, really love for coaching. You know, I was, I was so driven. I was like, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. And that's where I start first coaching. And that's where, you know, enjoyment of approaching people and uh, dealing with the different characters and painting them the picture of what they could be, what they should be, what, you know, all this was really appealing to me. And that's why I really, uh, that's why I really fell in love with coaching. You know, that's why I really liked it. And um, I graduated after that. I did one year in St. Louis working in a tennis club, in academy. And then I got a chance to be a assistant coach at Linden University to do my grad school. So I did my grad school from 2008 to 2009. It was uh, after that, when I finished, that was also great at Linden University. I really, I really, because that was, the, you know, full-time working with the, 
with the people that actually I played before against because they were in the same conference. Now I'm coaching them. So it was a different approach and, and trying to let them buy in, in the plan that I had and what I want to do. And it was just unbelievable year where we created a great relationship and it was really enriching for me. So I finished my grad school. I did it in a sports management uh-huh. because that was my actually a dream, what I want to do, uh, which happens in, in, in a year before in my first year. I didn't know when I came to college, I didn't know what I want to study. I really, I really didn't know. And then I watched the movie and then I realized that's what I want to do. And the movie was uh, Jerry Maguire, Jerry uh-huh. Maguire, where he's the sport agent. And I really loved how, what, what, what he was doing. And he was actually, you know, he went to the personal transformation, but what for, for me is how he helped people because who they are and build their, on their personality and bet on people and really do the, do the right thing. So it was, I was like, okay, that's what I want to do. I want to do same things as Jerry Maguire. I want to connect to people. I want to, I want to be trustworthy. I want to, I want to do the deals. I want to create opportunities, all these kind of things. So once I got to grad, grad school and I had a chance to do sports management, I was like, okay, that's what I'm going to study. So I did my undergrad in the business administration at my grad school in uh, sports management. Yeah. So I did that, finished that. And I was like, okay, I finished the grad school and I'm, I'm my my job also to have some money in the pocket is was to ref the football games on the weekends or at the nights I would ref uh, football games for the kids who are like under 15 under 13 under 11 under 10 and it's so cold St. Louis I'm there in the jacket I have the freaking uh, the flag I just finished I was like what am I doing now you know I remember that moment exactly what I'm saying because that's the moment I decided I need to do something more I was like what I'm going to do now get a job this and the kids are falling there's like parents are yelling because I'm not paying attention you know like uh, there's no offside there's no foul I, I'm not even pulling the flag I'm just like in my own world zoned out there in San Luis. and I said okay if you want to Israel, if you want to be a coach you need to go to Florida and start working from the bottom and see what's what life has for you. If you are as good as you think you are, then you're going to break through and you're going to find your path and you're going to find things. If not, then you're going to do something else. Yeah. And that's where I decided. I was like, okay, that's it. That's what I'm doing. I borrowed some money. I paid a a $1,000 for a car, went down there. And that's where my journey started in, in, uh, in Miami. So, I started from the bottom, working, blah, 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 this and that. And I got a chance through some connections. First, my first job as a a pro coach was with Ani Miachika. And she's from Croatia. She was just finishing college also. She was number one in college in Division I. We knew each other from back home. We talked. I I told her what I want to do, my passion and this. And that's how we started. So then I was, I was coaching her for, for four years. And then uh, she stopped, unfortunately, for the family reasons. And then I coached Teresa Mrdeža. Then I coached, um, I coached uh, Magda after that. Also, I coached Danka Kovinic. So there was, a, there was a couple of players that I coached down the, down the road on the tour and in the time when I was coaching Magda which started six years ago I met Alan Ma from uh, he uh, he has a team in Guangzhou called a Star River Professional Tennis Club and uh, throughout the conversation because I was looking in that time someone to help us we were really struggling really you know she was 120 we could not break we were missing financially many many things and he offered to help he offered to help this. So that's what I'm saying. There's always, you know, at, just to tell you this journey from this, sorry, I would probably need like three, three four hours because there's so many things going on where, where, life, where life hits you. But there's so many, you know, those are the moments where if you keep knocking on the door, someone will open the window. You know, someone will open the, the, the roof. 
someone will open and you just need to be you need to be persistent no matter what no matter if you really care about what you do there is you don't take no for the answer you don't bother people you don't bother people that's what you need you, you don't bother you you bother your your passion yourself you bother your exactly your craft you know people tell me oh is oh nobody wants to invest do you have a wall? Do you have a go out there and hit on a tennis wall? Somebody is going to pass someday is going to say, you know what? This girl or this guy is so persistent. What's your name? Let me help you. Where's your coach? Somebody is going to ask you some question. But if you are not on the tennis wall, if you're not hitting, if you're waiting to go to the best academies in the world, nobody was going to ask you nothing because you are not out there doing your crap. You're not bothering your passion. You know, you're not, not, because that's how I see it. If you keep knocking on the life, not, life is going to say, you know what? Is a, you're so tired. I, 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 cannot, I cannot deal with you anymore. There you go. Pass. Let me, let me bother somebody else because you're too persistent and you're making me tired. Okay. Because that's what life usually tells you. And that's, that's for me, let's say the, the journey from when I decided to go to college all the way where I got to meet with. Alan Mine being the team and now part of the starter profession. It was, it was basically because I was persistent, not because I'm good or great or something. It's just because I decided not to take no for the answer. Mm -hmm. That was, that was all what it is. And now when I look at it, I'm, you know, if I could do this with, with, I would say average skills, average you know, whatever, but just hundred percent desire decided that I'm not, that's it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to find a way. Imagine the kids or anybody with the great skills that they have. If they plan from the beginning, if they put the right mindset, if they learn the skills, what they could achieve in their life and where they could go. I, there's no way I could plan when I was going to when I was going to the college that one day I'm going to be working in China and working with some kids from Hong Kong from that's, that's a mystery of life. That's the beauty part. That's, you know, when people ask me, what did you, what did you learn? I say, I learned that you don't know what you don't know. And that's the whole point. Because if you, if you were just operating on what you know that you don't know, you would quit a long time ago. People would not discover anything. So I really believe in that you don't know what you don't know. And you just need to keep going. You need to keep pushing if you really love it. If you don't love it, it's still good. There's no, there's no, whatever makes you, whatever makes you tick in the end of the day. You know, if you can go and sleep and be happy, whatever you do, doesn't matter if it's, if it's, if it's, there's, there's no bad job. There's nothing bad. Everything is a service. Everything is a service. Exactly. So that's, that's how I end up in the, in the Star River. So that was the kind of very speed through journey. And always there's a part where you see opportunity. You know, if you stay awake on that horizon, you're going to see a light somewhere. You're going, you're going to but see let's, the... Let's wind up uh, for, for a bit uh, in the past. As you've mentioned yes. now, your breakthrough moments... Uh, in a way, uh, the, the moments that impacted you, they, that imprinted in you on your being, behaving, and a soul part as well. Um, you needed to be someone, you needed to come from somewhere in a way, um, from the country, from your family, from mm -hmm. your background, that you were able to, uh, to recognize the moment when your friend uh, in, in uh, Croatia back then um, made you a possibility open to go to college and then in yes. college that you had that ability to recognize to have that distinction Ooh, that hurt my ego but what am i going to do with it so you needed to yeah. have certain background knowledge yes. to distinctionalize all these moments and when you were a coach um, not a coach a referee there on the on the field uh, with football that you ask yourself and and so these moments were in a way uh, made uh, possible from your background of uh, awareness consciousness acknowledgement family uh, yes maybe maybe uh, if maybe put a light on that a bit um, 
who are you and how because now of course you are a well known coach and a very good person and a soul that understands but you went through something uh, those moments but what was the beginning what was that background that made you possible that you went through these moments well that's i i'm not sh i'm not sure what would that be but i can give you i can give you the belief i i have about it you know so now um but when you said good coach i would i well known coach and this is something that also coaches need to know uh working on the tour or working in in junior tennis in your local club or whatever it's the same thing if you approach it with the, with the extreme passion it's it's you know that's that's what only matters you know before i was thinking you know all oh, coaches who are working on the tour that's the only good coach and and stuff like that but that's that's for me change you know now i see when i when i see coaches when they do stuff it's about what kind of passion they have and how they approach towards it so that's for me uh, that's for me a good coach you know well, well known coach for me that's you know no, and I, I don't i was I don't, referring to not the ego version but the yeah, I don't coach that my, you are. Yeah, that you yes. impact a lot of players and 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 where you are at now. But uh, the the background, your belief, as you mentioned, is something that drove you forward. That you had that uh, X factor, X gene, in a way, that made you do that. But because I believe that a lot of your friends were also offered to go to college, maybe, but they didn't go. Yes, did. and you went yeah, a lot of things through. There's it, there's along. there's one there's like this. So people ask. I think there's many more factors. So people ask why the tallest tree is the tallest in the forest. So uh, how they said it is not because that it has the best roots, but it's also because it's the closest to the sun. It's always turned, not close to the sun, it's always turned whole day to the sun. Maybe the best tree, the tallest tree was next to him, but one day the, the guy who takes care of the forest came and cut it, okay? Maybe that tree was the closest to the river, yeah? So other trees could not grow because it was getting the most water. So there is many, many different aspects in your life. Once you see someone successful, an athlete or whatever, you need to go back, as you said, all through their lives. And then you see, you see these moments, moments, the moments that actually build them in who they are. And um, <clears throat> in my case, it was a mix of desperation and inspiration, you know? Desperation to, to get out of what I believe I should be and inspiration of the people who were around me. So um, I, I would say that's the mix, you know? I would, I would always see myself as someone that I think should, should you know, I should not have this. I should, you know, I think it comes, to be honest, it comes also from uh, the war era, you know, because at that time you feel also, you feel different influences uh, religion wise and all these kind of things. So you, you feel on some certain moments, um, let's say discriminations and all these kinds. Of, so it kind of rub up on me that, you know what? there should not be discrimination. There should not be, you put somebody down because of the, what's their name or what's their color or where they come from. And mm -hmm. I think that's where I got that um, anger not to accept uh, mistreating or not to accept unfairness or very be, I'm very, I think because of that, I'm very, active when I see when people are not treating other people with the equal respect mm -hmm. that people deserve. And that was for me, I think, driving factor because um, I, I think I, I, I deserve like everybody else. We need to push, we need to do this. And so it was desperation and inspiration, I think so, if, if you put it like that. You know, I was, I'm very allergic to uh, inequality or, or um, racism or those are for me very because i felt in my life when i was a child I, I i experienced mistreatments and that's where i decided you know what i need to leave so i can 
I can do what I need to do because that's how I felt it. I don't know. Maybe that was just my own world because, you know, but I, it was, it was, there was no crying about it. You know, there was no crying about it. You, you just need to, you need to do what you need to do, you know, and, and uh, going, going to us, I would, I would tell you this going to us for was me like a chance to have a, a fresh start doing something that, that, you know, I can, I can do differently or the way I want to do, or, you know, it was, it was something like that. It was, I don't know, but yeah. interesting question. Now, when I look at it, I think it was desperation and inspiration. You know? doesn't think too, that uh, athletes um, are, are um, obliged in a way to recognize in life, the adversity, mm -hmm. the rainbow of emotions of life, not just seeing the ego winning and the fame and yeah. money and everything, but uh, seeing the light in the darkness and acknowledging the light as well. Uh, and, 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 and using it uh, as a trampoline, as a jumping, uh, you know. The, yeah, I, the I agree. Point. Yeah, so, so agree. that's, that's uh, because in, in the podcast, in, in my career, in my life, uh, what I'm most as inspired about is to pinpoint these moments and, and these X factors. And there are a lot of factors, as you mentioned. Of course. But to, to really... Uh, put it out there and, and to really put the reflector, the light on that instant because athletes, we are, as I was athlete and you and, and anyway, you, are, you have a career in, in, in coaching, but it's the same. It's, we are obsessed. And when you are obsessed, when you are uh, driven and focused, you don't see a lot of things because you are, you are very much uh, in line. So now, please. now when you said that, I think I can also pinpoint the feeling, emotion I had. Let's say in life, I would, I would didn't, I didn't succeed in many things when I was before I went to U.S. And when I said I'm going to go to U.S., actually everybody laughed at me. They laughed at me, not at me, but at my idea what I'm thinking because I was not good tennis wise, and I was not good school wise, and that's where I decided I'm going to do everything to prove them wrong. So it was a wrong motivation. Now I see because it, it but also it was the, it was the motivation I had at that time. It was the only thing. Yeah. That's, uh, it was the only thing I was yeah. like, I'm going to prove you wrong. No matter what I'm going to make, do I need a, do I need to do this? Do I need to take shortcuts. Do I need a, whatever it takes I'm going to do to, to prove them wrong. And that was my, that was my motivation. And I think also my motivation was when I started coaching was also that because I think people didn't take me seriously. Uh, it's not that they take me seriously right now, but at that moment I, I felt I was not earning respect. But now when you look at it, it's not about, it was not about how they see me. It was about how I see myself. Yeah. And that's what changed in recent years or stuff like that is I realized that I didn't see myself as worthy and I was, I was looking for approval in the wrong place and stuff like that. And, but in the one hand, you need the approval of the people that are good in the industry and stuff like that. So that's, that's something that you should, it's, it's nice to have. It's good because you are colleagues and you work together and you actually not approval, a respect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a respect you get by respecting yourself and your work and being honest and being truthful and being genuine and being, being hardworking and being grateful and being resent, uh, uh, persistent. That's how you earn the respect. That's you know? earning, yeah. Yeah. That's earning respect. Earning respect is not the result because results come and go and stuff yeah. like that. But that's what ego is earning respect. But these are the values that later on I realized that's where I should put my energy. And that's what people recognize that the real people with those qualities will recognize that. And that's what you're looking for, you know? And if you want to be recognized for your results, then you're going to be probably recognized by the people who only look for results. And in the end, it's going to be very shallow because in the end, you still didn't take care of the part that you need to take care of. And that's yourself. The way you see yourself, the way you respect yourself, the way you love yourself for what you do 
is most important thing. And that's something that, you know, I was not taught or learned or stuff like that. So I used a different, now when you think about it, it's very good question because one you were talking about, I was like, no, it's, it's, it, I need to give a different answer. But now when you were talking, I realized, yeah, this is, this is the honest approach on that.